Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. It's uh, good to be gathered together. Today uh, is St. Patrick's Day. We celebrate the life of Patrick, uh, the patron saint of Ireland, on this 17th of March. Patrick was born in uh, Celtic Cornwall around the year 390 and was captured by Irish raiders when he was 16 years old and taken to Ireland as a slave. After six years, he escaped and seemed to have gone to the continent. He eventually found his way back to his own family, where his previously nominal Christian faith grew and matured. He returned to Gaul and was uh, there trained as a priest, and much influenced by the form of the monastic uh, monasticism uh, evolving under Martin of Towers. Uh, when he was in his early 40s, he returned to Ireland as bishop and made his base in Armagh, uh, which became the centre of his see. He evangelised the people of the land by walking all over the island, gently bringing women and men to a knowledge of Christ. Although he faced fierce opposition and probably persecution, he continued his missionary journeys. Despite being unsuccessful in his attempts to establish a diocesan system he had experienced in Gaul, his monastic, founda monastic foundations proved to be uh, the infrastructure required to maintain the faith after his death, which occurred on this day, in the year 460. We uh, follow the Church of England uh, 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 morning prayer form, which can be downloaded to your smart device or you can follow it on, our web on the Church of England website. Parts in bold if you respond with those, if you wish. And you may say the even verses in the canticles and the psalms as we go through them. Or you may just want to listen uh, as we uh, go through this service together today. However you can worship, uh, please do follow that form. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach uh, your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. So we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'd say the first of the Psalms appointed for today, Psalm 63. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, and in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall, proclaim, shall praise you. 
I will bless you all as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with the marrow and the fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And when I remember you upon my bed and mediate on you in the watches of the night, for, I have, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All those who swear by him shall be glad, for the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'm going to go to the canticle after the Old Testament reading, the Sunga Manasseh. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God Most High, for you are full of compassion, unsuffering and very mindful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the heights of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the hosts of heaven sing, sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. A reading from John 10. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for, his, for his, the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know of my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Again, the Jews were divided because of these words. Many of them were saying, he is a demon and he is out of his mind. Why listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? First picked out for today's reflection is verse 16. There'll be one flock, one shepherd. Our reflection today comes from Graham James. This version of the Good Shepherd drawing everyone into one flock comes after we've been told that the blind man to whom Jesus gave sight was driven out of his community. He was expelled because he would not condemn Jesus 
for giving him his sight on the Sabbath. Even a mighty work done on the Sabbath contravened the laws of Moses, so the scribes and Pharisees claimed. Jesus draws a contrast between religious teachers concerned to keep the purity of their group, whatever the, the human casualties, and his own desire to draw in other sheep who would not belong to this fold. He does not say who these other sheep are, but early readers of John's Gospel would have included many Gentiles who may have applied these words to themselves. It's likely, however, that the words of the prophet Ezekiel provide the context here. The prophet condemns the religious leaders of the day. God himself would have to come and be the people's shepherd. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, strengthen the weak. The whole course of the ministry of Jesus has been shaped by these priorities. It has brought a vehement opposition. The question John poses his readers is, whose side are you on? Though he is too subtle to put it quite so crudely. So we come to the responsory. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. So we come to the Benedictus, uh, the Gospel Canticle for today. It's traditional to stand at this point, and uh, you can stand with me as uh, we say the whole of the canticle together, uh, including the refrain at the beginning and end. Christ gave them as a light to the nations that his salvation might reach the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to, it, to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. So we come to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, Today we pray for the whole of your created order. For the starving people of the world without adequate food or shelter. For street children who have no one to care for them. For those who watch helpless as their children suffer as a result of war, malnutrition and poverty. We pray too for those who lack drugs to be treated, particularly those with HIV, those dying through the lack of clean water or the cost of a mosquito net. Families struggling to understand and to come to terms with coronavirus. So think of those in our society 
who are neglected and abused by the very people who should protect in them. We pray that your spirit will nurture, comfort, heal and bless and bring your wholeness to all who need it. Loving God, we ask that you raise up leaders of nations who have integrity and a vision for the future, who care for those they've governed. May all races and nations be one family in your love. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before God those countries which lay heavy on our hearts this day. Loving God, we pray for the family lives of the nation upon which so much depends. We know that good experience of family life leads to good family life in the next generation. But the extra strain of coronavirus has brought many into, brought into many homes uh, with uh, homeschooling and working from home, loss of earnings, care for the sick, we pray that as children go back to school and that as we start to relax some of our restrictions, there will be a sense of normality and sense of um, being able to work out a way forward. We ask that you be among us to bless, guide and keep us safe and that our homes will be places of love, patience and forgiveness. Continue to teach us the way of Jesus, who knew the security of a loving home with Mary and Joseph in Nazareth. Loving God, we pray for those who play a role in caring for the sick and dying, for those who work in hospitals, care homes and hospices, for those who visit people in their homes. Give them the strength to carry on in difficult times as they care for them. And we bring before you all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, knowing that whatever dark times of suffering, anxiety or confusion, your love is so intimate and faithful. It is so strong, uh, stronger than any bond here on earth. We take a moment now before God, to pray for anyone who we know who is in need of healing at this time. Loving God, we also ask that for all who are grieving uh, the loss of a loved one, whether recent or in the past, and that they will find comfort as you hold them in their sorrow. Pray for Pam Newstead and her f family as they mourn her loss, whose funeral was here yesterday. As we remember loved ones who have gone before us, grant that we may one day share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people. Keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with us this morning. It's been good to gather together on this St. Patrick's Day. 
And uh, whatever you're doing this day, do stay safe and stay well. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for morning prayer at uh, 9 o'clock. And there will also be a service of Holy Communion at 10.30. Go well, my friends. <laughs>